Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Modern Dog Training. My name is Drayton Michaels, Dog Trainer Behavior Technician. Let's discuss the best way to address leash reactivity. Leash reactivity is defined as a dog who is lunging and barking, essentially going over threshold, and they could either be fearful, stressed, frustrated, or even happy. The thing about leash reactivity is that it is based in behaviors that are going to make everybody stressed out. The handler, the dog, the oncoming people, the general public, and especially if you've got a dog that somebody might be concerned about already. So the best way to handle leash reactivity is first and foremost, stay aware. Number two, be vigilant about your environment, okay? This means notice things. It's not just a matter of awareness, but be vigilant. Have a list of things that your dog will react to. Typically, the categories of reactivity are other dogs, people, traffic, and that includes things on wheels such as skateboards and baby carriages, and sounds. You may have a dog who has all reactivity to all things. You may have a dog who's only reactive to people, or only reactive to dogs, or only reactive to traffic, or only reactive to certain kinds of traffic. The most important thing about leash reactivity is that the handler is always working to reduce stress. Distance is your first parameter that you want to mitigate and control and manipulate to your advantage. This is why you have to stay aware and be vigilant. Creating distance, even 10 extra feet sometimes, is going to be the best thing you can do because it's going to lower stress, it's going to lower frustration, it might even lower excitability. The other thing it does is it sets you up by practicing maximum dog etiquette so you're not in the way with your reactive dog. Distance will also afford you the ability to mark yes and pay the dog, which is counter conditioning. Counter conditioning, the mark and pay or yes and treat protocol is pairing the dog's orientation to something in the environment or a sound and marking yes and paying the dog a high value food reward. If that event is sustained, bikes, people passing, other dogs across the street, you wanna maintain a rate of reinforcement of every two to four seconds that you're paying the dog a food reward. Your rate of reinforcement or the quickness with which you deliver the food is predicated on distance. If it's too close, too soon, too sudden, too intense, it may not work. The dog may go over threshold and they may not wanna take the food. Maintain your distance, create distance, and mark and pay. That's the best way to combat leash reactivity. Some dogs are not stressed or scared or fearful or even frustrated. They're just simply excited and happy. Happy reactivity is a big part of many young dogs' behavioral pathologies. They are happy, they're excited, and a lot of times they just wanna go greet people and they wanna go greet other dogs. The reality of life is that you cannot greet every person and you cannot and should not greet every dog that you encounter. So by marking and paying, by marking yes and paying the dog a high value food reward, you're going to reduce that stress. If the dog is fearful or stressed or frustrated, however we wanna label it, then it is paramount that you mark and pay because that is going to help reduce that stress. Fear trumps food. So if you're using high value food and the dog's not taking it, it's quite possible that they are too afraid or too stressed. If they are taking food yet they're still fearful, at least they're in the game and you can get the counter conditioning accomplished. You can get this done and help the dog stand their threshold and feel better as long as the human does the work. It's not going to happen if you just pray it away or hope it goes away. I'm often asked, why not just ask the dog for their name or a sit or a leave it? Well, this is because what we ultimately want the dog to do is we want the dog to disengage from the stimulus and focus on the handler. And it is quite a bit of work for a frustrated, fearful, or excited dog to ask them to do something in the face of something that causes them fear, stress, excitement. It's very simple when you simply mark yes and you pay the dog that's requiring the dog to do nothing but orient to the stimulus. In time, that yes and treat routine is going to create an auto disengage or they're going to pop off the marker. And what that means is when they hear that marker word, yes, they're gonna turn back to the handler because they know it means they're gonna get paid. It's way more efficient and a lot more elegant to mark and pay than to ask the dog for their name or to sit or to leave it. Once the event is over and the stimulus has passed, then you can ask your dog for a leave it or a touch to get them to disengage. But in the moment that they go, huh? And they see a dog, a person, traffic, or hear a sound, 
just mark yes and pay the dog a food reward. If it's a sustained event, a dog across the street, cars going by, yes, 1,001, 1,002, yes, 1,001, 1,002, and pay them every two, three, four seconds. That is going to teach your dog that the environment is safer and it's going to predict, hey, I get paid when the environment changes, when dogs show up, when people show up, when traffic goes by. I'm gonna get paid and that's gonna have a good predictive value. Something that people don't often get told is that one of the things Pavlov really figured out when he was studying dogs was predictive value. Dogs will attach a predictive value to everything in their life. If you grab the leash, it predicts a walk. If you grab a ball or a toy for a dog that's obsessed with playing fetch, it predicts you're gonna play fetch. And when you assign the predictive value of sudden environmental contrast to getting a food reward, guess what's gonna happen? The dog is going to see the stimulus or hear the stimulus and check in with the handler. At that point, when you're getting the auto disengage, you can yes and treat the dog for turning back and looking for the food. You can even mix and match because remember, training in the real world is sometimes messy and you have to stay flexible and fluid. So you can mix and match, meaning let's say you see a dog and they're across the street and you mark yes and you pay the dog, mark yes and you pay the dog, mark yes and you pay the dog. On the fourth time you're about to mark yes, the dog jumps the marker before you can say it and turns around. Yes and treat him for turning back. The only rule is don't cause your dog fear and pain. The only rule is don't resort to using a prong collar, a choke collar or a shock collar because all that's gonna do is suppress your dog and cause more fear. Fear is the underlying cause for aggression. That's the antithesis of what we wanna do with dogs. Remember, dogs associate every single event and every single stimulus as safe, unsafe or neutral and we wanna help them stay in that safe associative category and you do that by using mark and pay, yes and treat, mitigating your distance and doing things the legitimate way, which is the force free way. Thanks for watching Modern Dog Training. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and pass this information on to somebody who might need it. Remember, train force free every day, all day.